Again, my name is Bill Bowman. Hi, everybody. Uh, real quick, my history. I got my first job uh, out of college at Rutgers University at the uh, 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 PD Review, Ooh, yeah. right, when it was owned by Somerset Press before Forbes bought it. So this was 1983. So I, I worked there for a while. Uh, the company bought a paper in South Plainfield called the South Plainfield Reporter. I, I was switched there at the tender age of 26, I think, and became the editor. Big mistake. Um, I got out of journalism for a while. I went back. I joined uh, the Courier News out of Bridgewater. Um, I was there until about from about 97 to 2004, where I went down when I went down to Asbury Park Press, which was my hometown paper. And I was at the Asbury Park Press until Gannett decided it needed to lose some weight last August. So uh, three weeks later, I had the uh, it's called the Franklin Reporter and Advocate. I live in Franklin Township, which is uh, practically next door to Highland Park. I used to live in Highland Park as well, by the way. Um, uh, we, f uh, we founded it, re really went live August 29th of last year, so it's not quite a year yet. Um, it took me about three weeks to, uh, to, to decide on a, on, a, on a theme. I, I use WordPress as my CMS. Uh, to decide on a theme and also to get some copy together uh, before I could launch. So about three weeks of going to Township council meetings and school board meetings and whatnot to get everything up. So um, I am sort of going against the grain, uh, and, and this, I know why, this is why Debbie is interested in me because I I have a subscription-based model. We sell advertising, but I also sell subscriptions, and the subscriptions have been going pretty well. Um, I, we, we don't talk about revenue, but I can tell you that about a third of our revenue right now is subscriptions. Um, I'm in kind of the same place that I think Highland Park is, and, and it's definitely Denellen is, we're covered by the same paper, or supposedly anyway. Um, we had a bunch of weeklies in Franklin Township. We had, we had the thing called the Somerset Spectator from 1969 to I think maybe five or six, seven years ago. We had, the, I think the, uh, the Packet had a paper in Franklin Township at one time. Yes. That one, that, oh, okay, it's, it's still active? Oh, God, I haven't seen it in years. So, okay, so that's different. And then we had another paper that, uh, that uh, Forbes put out for a while when they still were into the community newspaper business, and it was called the Franklin Focus. It was basically happy talk. It, it really wasn't much of anything. But we have had a dearth of local coverage for a very long time. So the folks in town were, are very appreciative of the fact that now we have a, a place to go, or they have a place to go now where we can actually read about what's going on. My first school board meeting before I really went live, um, the, the school board was talking about an $85 million referendum uh, to build a new school and to and make renovations at, at other schools in town. Nobody knew about it. I hadn't heard about it. Nobody knew that, that they were planning on raising almost $90 million to, or spending $90 million to, to build these new schools. So uh, a lot of stuff going on in town, and, and, and the reception has been really good uh, in, t in terms of that. Now, I'm in a good position because of that. I don't, really don't have any competition. Um, the Home News slash Courier News, they call themselves MyCentralJersey.com now. It's a Gannett uh, paper. Same thing. If someone gets shot, they're all over it. Um, when the pr a principal suddenly resigns from the high school, you don't hear a word about it from them. But if something you know, really bad happens, they're there. So um, I really don't have that much competition, which is good for me. On the news side, as well as the advertising side, and as Joe said, and by the way, take advantage of this guy. He, he's, he's, he's a wealth of knowledge, and he can give you a perspective because when you're in the middle of it, it's all happening around you, and, and he's out there up in Maine in the woods <laughs> among the birds and the, the moose, and, he can, and, and he, can, he can give you a different perspective and maybe have you, you know, let you see things that maybe you're not seeing because you're, you're trying to make this thing happen. Um, and if I talk too fast, please you know, do this or something because I have a habit of, of speaking too fast. The biggest, I guess the biggest lesson I've learned in the past 10 months, um, I'm, a, I, I, I'm a journalist by trade. I mean, I, I studied for it in college. I, it's really pretty much, except for about seven or eight years when I worked at NJIT, it's pretty much all I've done. So as a journalist, as a reporter, you, you don't tend to worry about business. You don't care necessarily what your story, what impact your story is going to have on advertising or on, on the business side of things because, you know, journalism is pure. But as publisher, you have to, that's all you have to worry about is, is you know, bringing in advertising revenue. Even though we're having, we have subscriptions, the bulk of our, of our revenue still is advertising. So the biggest lesson I had to learn was 
you know, when I, when, when I need to take off the reporter hat and put on the publisher hat. And it was very hard. It's very hard for me to do that because I, I, I tend to think of, you know, I don't want to do anything that's going to compromise my reporting, but at the same time, I've, I've got to do stuff that's going to entice businesses. So, you know, I, I, I do things, I'm trying to rack my brain now to think of an example, but probably nothing really egregious, but just little tiny things that would just make me feel a little queasy as a reporter, as a straight reporter. But you've got to do those things, and, and I think that would be the biggest... Um, the biggest piece of advice I could get, give you is the queasiness. Well, okay. Uh, uh, let's see. I'm, well, I'm trying to get a good one. No, no, keep the camera on. One of the hardest part, one of the hardest things I'm having to deal with right now is, is getting obituaries. We have one major funeral parlor in town. We have another one that I think is, uh, I don't know if it's a front or, or what, because there's never anybody there, but. We have one major funeral parlor. I cannot get this guy to give me obituaries. I don't know why. I've called, I mean, since August, I've, I've called, I've emailed, I've stopped by. The last time I talked to one of his underlings, the guy hung up on me. And I'm not trying to sell him anything. I just want his obituaries. I'm, I'm not charging for obits. Uh, you guys may have different opinions on that. I don't think you should charge for obits. So uh, my wife, as, as Joe mentioned, my wife, my wife and I met at Somerset Press. She was the advertising manager for the, for the chain of papers. Somerset Press was a, a chain of papers based in Somerset County uh, out of Somerville. They had, I think at the heyday, it was like six or seven papers in, in different towns. Really nice, really well-run weekly newspapers. Top quality stuff. So she was the, um, the advertising manager for the chain. And, and when we met, we didn't like each other, but that's a big story. Anyway, uh, well, advertising editorials like that. Cute, Yeah. So uh, anyway, so she's selling, yeah, she's, the, she's my ad man, a director, and she's trying to get this one guy who, who has an electrical business in town, and he doesn't, for some reason, his son, who, who makes the marketing decisions, doesn't want to advertise with us because we don't have obituaries, and this guy is making the, the connection between obituaries, and the lack of obituaries, and the freshness of the news, and I'm posting every, yeah, right? I'm posting every day, so I don't know what the hell this guy's talking about. So uh, the other day I was, I was at, a, a, at a meeting, I was, and, and this guy is a big name in town, and his brother is, a, is also a big name in town. They don't like each other. I'm, friends, I'm friendly with the other brother, mainly more than this guy. So, so the, the brother says, you know, Pat's been sort of bad-mouthing a little bit about the fact that he doesn't have obits. I said, what the hell? And he was, you know, they don't have obits. So, you know, that, uh, I said, all right, fine. My first instinct as a journalist, now I take this personally, right? When someone's criticizing my journalism, I mean, you know, because I'm really connected to it. I take it personally. My first thing to was to go up to him and say, what the hell, pal? Shut your yap. And that's what I would have probably have done had I not been a publisher. And this is, not, and this is all going in my head, like within, within the, the five seconds it's taking me to walk up the sidewalk to go up to see Pat. And I said, well, how, how should I deal with this? Should I tell him to shut the hell up or should I? Well, I, I, made, I made the decision like that, and I just looked at him. I said, so when are you going to advertise with me? And, you know, and I, I had a big, big smile and everything, and he kind of laughed. He goes, well, you know, I really want to, but my son, blah, blah. And I, and I started talking to him about stuff. And I said, you know, well, you know it, it's... And he says, well, I really don't need to advertise because I have so much business. I said, you know, most of the people in this town don't need to advertise. But that's not the point. The point is the folks in this town know that we need a homegrown local source of independent news to, to, let, us, to let them know what's going on. And they're supporting it just because of that. They don't necessarily need the advertising. They just know that they need to support this venture. And I, I told him about our statistics. Um, uh, since, since January, from January to June, something like 56,000 um, uh, unique viewers, uh, 180,000 page views. This is just one town, right? And it doesn't sound like a whole lot compared to some of, some of these other, <coughs> other ventures, but this is just one town with, with maybe 62,000 people in total. So I'm pretty happy with those numbers. We had, in May, it was our best month. Um, yeah, maybe it was our best month, uh, like 20-some-odd thousand unique views. But anyway, so I'm telling him all this stuff, and, and the bottom line was, he said, give me a call in two weeks, and we'll do it. I want to come on board, we'll do it. So th that kind of made me feel a little queasy because I really wanted to level the guy for bad-mouthing my journalism because I, I take pride in that. I'm, I'm, at, I'm at council meetings, I'm at school board meetings, I'm at the committee meetings under, uh, you know, below the level of the council, talking about stuff before it even gets there, if it ever gets there. I'm in the schools. I'm covering little things that are going on in classrooms. You know, I'm at the, the, the dance recitals. I'm doing photo 
essays and all sorts of stuff. I was at graduation. I was at the prom. So I take pride in what I do. And uh, so, so that's one of the, I think that was one of the, uh, one of the, one of the play times. The other time is, is just going into these businesses and with flyers and stuff. And that's, what, that's one thing you need to do. You need to get out there. You need to, you need to talk to people, especially if you're, if you're going to be a, I, I, I tell people what I do is it's a, it's a weekly hometown newspaper but it's online. So you got the flavor of the hometown newspaper. Our, our motto at, at PD Review is we cover the town like a blanket, and we really did. Um, but instead of coming out every Thursday, we, I, we come out whenever we come out, whenever something happens, I'm posting. So I, was, I had to go, I, had, I made flyers up, I went to businesses to talk to the business owners, to tell them, to introduce myself to them and say, this, you know, we're new in town, blah, blah, blah. I, I kind of stopped short of saying, and we're going to be sending somebody to talk to you about advertising in a week or so, because I, I kind of didn't feel comfortable doing that. I do it now, because, again, I, I put on the other hat, and I see how important it is, and we're, we're pretty successful with the advertising. So yeah, that's why I hand up. You just made one comment that caught me off guard. You said yeah. that we, we really... Uh, uh, businesses in town don't really need advertising. Not all of them. So, so really, what you're so it's really a donor-supported model that's sort of the, uh, you want to call it like that. Yeah, if you want to, there are, there are some people who are advertising me who who do need the advertising who need to know who need to let people know that they're here. But a lot of them, you know, some of them, we, we, some of these people that are advertising me print money. I mean, they they just really don't need it. They don't advertise with the with the the my central Jersey either. They do the um, the penny saver stuff. The, you know, the, the mailings. But they're doing it because they know they need to support local journalism. We, I have, I have um, Flemington Car and Truck Country. It's not even my town. But the guy knows, and I've known the guy for a long time. He's, he's, the, he's the, uh, the owner of the Somerset Patriots baseball team. Um, we also have a marketing deal with Somerset Patriots where we give them some ad space. They gave me a, a whole mess of tickets and uh, some, some uh, visibility at a, a couple games. And I'm able to run contests to give away free tickets to the Somerset Patriots. But you know the point was, he's, and, and, and another guy uh, advertised with me, he's, um, he's a, a home builder. And he says, yeah, I'm probably not going to sell any homes through this. But I, I, he says, I, I was born and bred in this town. And we need, we need a local news source. So We are um, trying to get our advertising off the ground from scratch. Yeah. You said your wife was an advertising sales manager. So yes. She came to this with some background. Yes. Are there like your top three tips for somebody who's coming at it green in an online yeah, world? That was, would give us like just to help us get. Well, if if you, the, the hardest part PJ is having with, to deal with this is transitioning from print because that's what she knows, mm -hmm. um, column inches and whatnot right. to digital right. pixels. So she and and you know she talked to Joe about that a few times. She had a hard time making making the the, and the transition. Mm -hmm. um, top three. You know, I, I don't, if you know your product, that's, I think the top one would be know your product. Mm -hmm. Know all the ins and outs of your product. Know who you're reaching, who, you're, who your market is. Because really, when you get down to it, selling is selling. I mean, the techniques you use to sell. Selling is basically, selling ads are basically, and this is how PJ looks at it. PJ is my wife, by the way. Um, you're helping the business owner increase their business. You're, you're trying to partner with them to help them you know, market themselves and be more successful because then they'll, they'll, they'll stay with you and you'll be more successful. So if you look at it from the point of view of, of that, of going in and trying to, to help this person build their business, because there's, there's, there's problems that they have with their business, reaching people or, or getting people in the store or wherever, whatever they have. So what you're going to try to do is answer those questions or, or provide solutions to them to get people in the door. So, but, but you've got to know your business. You've got to know what your product is. You've got to know all about, you know, the pixels and the, and the, you know, if you do share of space or share of voice, rather, instead of, rather than just run the ads down the side of the, of the site. Um, um, yeah, so, uh, like I said, know what you're talking about and then be thinking about how you can help them. What, what, uh, what, what's, what suggestions can you give them to, in terms of, and, and don't be afraid to offer suggestions on, on the actual ad, because we do that a lot. We design a lot of our ads. We don't charge for that. Some sites do. Some sites will charge you 25 or 50 bucks an hour to design your ads. I don't do it. I, I include it in the price. Mm -hmm. What I'm also probably going to be doing is, I, I, I wish I was here earlier, I would have talked to Kenny about it. Um, Broad Street, I use Broad Street ads to serve my ads. Um, 
very good. I, I, I don't bill through them. I bill myself. But Broad Street um, allows me to, to switch ads, I mean, immediately. Um, I, can, I, can, I can set up different campaigns. Like I have, like the Somerset Patriots, they have, they have three different ads that we run in the same spot. So we'll run one ad for a couple of weeks, and another for a couple of weeks, and another for a couple of weeks, and then they'll throw stuff at me for like 4th of July or whatever. So I'm able to plan those campaigns out. I can put start and end dates for each of the campaigns, and then the ads just change automatically. Um, Broad Street also offers a business directory uh, plugin for WordPress. I, I'm, I'm going to look into that because I think I'm going to start offering a business directory for the businesses that can't exactly afford. It's just a listing of businesses by category. Um, uh, we have a lot. Franklin Township is a funny town. We, we're, we're, we're bordered by New Brunswick. We're bordered by Hillsborough. So the part of town that's near New Brunswick obviously is a more low income part of town. We have, we have people living in tenements. We have people living in gated mansions. It's, a very, it's, a, it's 46, 47 square miles. It's one of the large, largest towns in Somerset County. It's the, it's the biggest town by population in Somerset County. And we have all, we, I mean, the, the diversity in this town is amazing. We, I, I, I think they speak 40 different languages in the, in the schools. So, um, how many people work for you? Me and my wife. You cover this all. <laughs> we cover the whole town, yeah. I, I, I will hire freelancers occasionally for photographs. I hired, I hired a freelancer to do a story once. It was a huge disaster, so I'll never do that again. Unless I know the person really well, I know how they can write. But, um, uh, not everybody can afford our, our, you know, our, uh, our price schedule. So I'm going to try to offer these business listings at a reduced price. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Um, can you have a print version? No. No. So you just found the line. Have you found that the advertisers um, in Franklin have gotten used to the? Oh yeah. The, the online. They're, they're, they're into the online thing. They know that. They, 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 I mean, they're pretty savvy. They know that, that print is on its way out. Popular guy. <laughs> so, because we thought, we, we, thought, we weren't sure. We thought we ought to do a print version once a month. Right. And, um, we thought that the advertisers were going to be in the mood to have the print version once a month. Right. That increases the complexity of our project. And, and also the overhead. I mean, you've got to find a place to print it. I mean, that costs money to print. That costs money to, to mail. And you know, it's funny. It's interesting because we were talking to a bunch of people. We went to some of these uh, entrepreneurial meetup sessions that, that different organizations have had around town in the past 10 months. And a lot of people say that when they get um, uh, like the freebies, the free papers in the driveways and stuff, they consider that garbage. They just they pick it up and they throw it away. They don't even look at it. They don't even take it out of the plastic bag. They're so used to getting their news on, on their phones or on their tablets or on their computers that when they see it in paper, they, a lot of times they just yeah, ignore it. So This is very helpful because we were Yeah, I wouldn't go. We were, I mean, obviously for me, I wouldn't do print. I started thinking about this in 2008, believe it or not, um, when Gannett first started losing weight. <laughs> exactly. And um, I started researching um, themes. So I had my theme pretty much picked out, you know, five years before I needed it. And I started thinking about how I would do things and, you know, what my what my strategy would be. And so I, because I knew eventually it was going to hit me. If I, st if I stayed with the press, I knew long, if I stayed there long enough, I was going to get targeted. So I, and I, and I did. But um, it was probably the best thing actually that happened to me. But my first thought was I was going to do a weekly newspaper, a physical newspaper. I was gonna, it was going to be a direct, um, a total market coverage product, TMC, right? Cover the whole town and then have a website that was, uh, that was uh, updated regularly, but have a, cover the whole town with a weekly or Thursday publication kind of a thing. I started looking at the prices, and I said, God, am I, you, know, you need a ton of money just for, you know, in the bank, just to, to bankroll the, the yeah. paper product. So, and then as time went on, it became more apparent that that paper really wasn't, they're all going to go into online anyway. I mean, Gannett, you can tell Gannett's moving that way. But, but I will say that some sites have had success counterintuitively in New Brunswick today. It's, it's found it easier to sell ads. It's, it's a strategy. I think that Josh will probably be studying it and looking into it. Yeah. Already is. Yeah. Um, you know, so I, I, I respect your opinion about mm -hmm. it, but I think that it's, it, you know, it, the jury is out and some people are finding it useful. Well, I wanted to ask you really quickly um, if you could talk about the, the process of the peer to peer a little bit. Because you were of, the I'm peer sorry. to peer. Oh, okay. Monthly meetings. Right. Because uh, you were, a, you have been a loyal participant. 
have, you know, could you talk about that of staying connected with the Oh, community? sure. Not just taking the money, but, you know. Yeah. <laughs> taking the money and run? Yeah. <laughs> Not that much money, but, yeah. No, it's, it was a great opportunity. It was a great um, um, uh, learning experience. I missed the newsroom, mm -hmm. right? I, mean, we, I came from a newsroom. Well, when I left, it wasn't that big. Excuse me, but, when, but at, the, at its peak, the newsroom was buzzing. And I love that, you know, you get that. If you've ever been in a newsroom, you, there's nothing like it, man. There's nothing like the camaraderie and, and listening to your uh, per person two, two, two chairs down, scream at somebody because they're not giving them what they need. And it's, it's great. So uh, when I was able to get up here or, or, or virtually, it was just nice being able to interact with people who are in the same boat that I am. And, and I may be able to learn something from them on the business side, and maybe I can, I can give them a little bit of... Uh, of, of information on, on the journalistic side because I have so much experience in it. Um, I'm probably, a whoever said they were the worst business person in the world, I'm probably worse than you. I really am. I mean, I'm terrible. Um, I'm learning, but uh, I'm, not, I'm not that good at it. But yeah, so the peer-to-peer -peer thing, and with Joe, I mean, it was just, uh, you can't beat it. I mean, there's just so much knowledge and, and because you don't know everything and, and someone may bring something up that you hadn't even thought of. And I, you know, that's a great. I think uh, you guys even did something. I forgot what it was now, but you guys did something I, I looked into that I had never. I know I maybe with the Facebook thing. I'm not sure. And that's changed now since then, but um, because they, they changed their algorithm, so it's, it's kind of pointless now to point, post on Facebook. But yeah, definitely stick with this and 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 participate because it's it's really it's going to pay off in dividends. Can I just ask quickly, how did you determine what you're going to sell your ads for and when you were just starting? Were I um, flexible about it. It's hit and miss. I I um, I I was recruited into this group called Lions, local independent online news something, right? It's a yeah. It's a bunch of people from around the country who have been, many of them who have been doing this for a number of years. And um, uh, so I, I just posted one day, can you guys please, if anybody is you know, willing, can you please post me or send me your, your rate sheets? So I got a bunch of rate sheets from people. And I said, oh, OK, so that's, that's what you, and you have to, you know, boy, you could talk for days about this. You know, how do you, how do you base your rates? Is it, is it do you do the, um, the CPM, the, uh, the, you know, per thousand clicks, or do you do it uh, by position, or, so, or, yeah. So what I decided to do was, um, because I knew that my CPM wasn't going to be all that great at first, and it may never be great, because again, I'm only in one town, and a lot of these, a lot of these sites are, are multiple towns, or even counties. So uh, I decided to go by position, with, with Joe's advice as well. And um, that's, that's really working. So our top banner, I wish I could show it to you, but we have, um, we have our, our flags up here, then we have a, a, a 468 by 160 pixel banner to the right, and uh, I do share of voice, which means it's different ads appearing in the same spot, and I do up to four ads in one spot. So our top banner right now is 450 a month, the flat rate. We offer, uh, we offer a 5% discount for six months, and I should know this, we offer a... Um, I think a seven or eight percent discount if you, if you sign up for a year. Then we offer, oh, and this is the other thing. This is the other good news. We've had people already whose initial contracts have ended and they've, re they've, they've re-signed. Both of them, one of them was for three months, one of them for, was for six months. They both signed on for a year. So okay. it's working. We also offer discounts for, for, uh, for uh, renewals. But again, it was hit and miss. Um, so we go from 450. I have another, uh, uh, my, my main box is 300 by 250, and that's at the top of the page. So when you, when you first look at the page, you see this box right there for the most part. That, I, I believe, on the front page, that's 300 a month. The other thing about the front page is we offer exclusivity to our advertisers. So you're only going to find one oral uh, um, surgeon. You're going to find one car repair guy. You're going to find one bagel shop on that front page. And we offer that to them because we, you know, it's just a, it's, it's, it's a, we are, we're, we're charging premium prices, so we're offering premium service. Um, the share of voice thing is very good. Um, no one seems to be, uh, no one seems to be objecting to the fact that they're sharing the space with maybe up to three other advertisers, and they're all cool with it. And I have it, again, through Broad Street, you can rotate. Uh, you can set the interval of time that, that the ads appear, like within seconds, right? So uh, we do that. Um, I have inside ads that go for 250 and 175. 300 by 250 ad is, is, is 250. A 300 by 125 ad is 175. 
And again, everything is a three month minimum because, uh, and, and this is just basic advertising. If you, if you throw up an ad for one month, no one's going to see it. No one's going to, no one's going to remember it. So, right? So, so you got to have at least three months. You got to have at least some, you got to have some repetition of it. Um, uh, what else can I tell you about our advertising? Um, I think that we should probably wrap it. Okay. But I'm hoping that you will continue with us in our peer to peer and help me. Oh, absolutely, yeah. People. So yeah. this will be, we'll be able to take a deeper dive into this. Plus, we will have Tiny Passes coming today to talk about this. Uh, and I use Tiny Pass. Uh, paywall slash membership options. Mary's using it. Um, and um, also, we will have a session, one of our longer sessions, on sales. And two, two master salespeople coming to that. So thank you very much. Okay, thank you.